So what changed? On January 4, the same day he announced the delivery of light tanks to Ukraine, French President Emmanuel Macron publicly shifted his own outlook on the war. One that previously mirrored Scholz's in seeking merely to forestall Ukrainian defeat. Now Macron came out for Ukraine's outright victory. Until victory. Until peace is restored, Macron tweeted a quote from Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. France, a longtime ally of Germany, thus found itself moving its narrative on the war and leaving Scholz alone among European leaders against Eastern European, Scandinavian and Baltic countries that insisted a more modern, agile and deterrent Europe should emerge, according to Kieswetter. Macron thinks geopolitically. Germany he sees as not a reliable partner any longer. Scholz is still stuck in that world of yesterday. Benjamin Tallis, a senior research fellow at the German Council on Foreign Relations, told Yahoo News. His approach has meant Germany, whilst giving a lot in absolute terms, is still having its reputation dragged through the mud. Scholz has hewed closely to the foreign policy legacy of his Social Democratic Party, SPD, once defined under former West German Chancellor Willy Brandt as Ostpolitik, the seeking of rapprochement with the Warsaw Pact nations. In recent decades the SPD, along with most other German parties, evolved into a more transactional and accommodating position to post-communist Russia. Angela Merkel, Scholz's immediate predecessor and a leader of the conservative Christian Democratic Union, welcomed cheap Russian energy into Europe, overseeing the construction of the controversial Nord Stream 1 and Nord Stream 2 gas pipelines. Gerhard Schroeder, a former SPD chancellor, remains one of Putin's most outspoken defenders in Europe. He was pressured last spring into resigning his $600,000 per year chairmanship of the board of Rosneft, Russia's state oil company. Schroeder continued to tout his friendship with Putin even as the bloody Ukraine war dragged on. The same can't exactly be said of Scholz. At the start of the war, he undertook a major about face with respect to German policy toward the Kremlin. Speaking on February 27 in the Bundestag, just three days after Russia's full-scale invasion, Scholz gave what is now known as Seidenwende speech, owing to his use of a German term for a major turning point. Whether we permit Putin to turn back the clock to the 19th century in the age of the great powers, he said, or whether we have it in us to keep warmongers like Putin in check. The speech heralded a marked increase in German defense spending, promising that it would soon be in excess of 2% of the country's gross domestic product. Stalwart and militaristic though Zeitenwende sounded 11 months ago, it was still predicated on a prevailing German assumption that Ukraine would lose badly and swiftly to Russia, according to Debski, the Polish think tank analyst. It was an absolutely fantastic speech, Debski said. But as a curtain raiser for a new era for Germany in which Russia was now seen as an aggressor nation and Berlin would be the natural leader of Europe around which all other nations would rally. It was not a speech about helping Ukraine through arms. What Scholz didn't count on, and what he's been reckoning with ever since, was the ferocity of Ukrainian resistance. Like many politicians, Scholz is closely tuned to public opinion in his country. His inner circle believes in forging a middle ground consensus in the German electorate, according to Rebecca Harms, a former member of European Parliament from the German Green Party. The Chancellor's nickname for many years was Scholzomat, Harms said. He is neither very emotional nor very charismatic. So after Merkel it seems that another careful actor has taken over power in Germany and that perhaps reflects what's going on with many Germans because they voted for him. And his election in December 2021 was not a given. By requiring America act first on sending tanks to Ukraine, Scholz indemnified himself to criticism at home. While beefing up Ukraine's offensive capability abroad.
It has also meant incurring the enmity of the Russians that Scholz once considered as partners in peace. Moscow responded to the news that German and American tanks would soon be en route to Ukraine with a mixture of fury, special pleading and grief. Anatoly Antonov, Russia's ambassador to the United States, called the decision a blatant provocation against the Russian Federation, claiming it was obvious that Washington is purposefully trying to inflict a strategic defeat on us. Obvious indeed. Inflicting a strategic defeat on Moscow has been acknowledged American policy for months. On Russian state media, propagandists responded with characteristic bombast. Scholz and his government, they said, were Nazi scumbags and Russia would soon be bombing Berlin and Dresden. On unofficial channels, pro-war Russian commentators were a bit more nervous. Alexei Zhivov a Russian military journalist, called the German and American tanks formidable and dangerous weapons that would likely be used effectively by the Ukrainian military in operations supported by Western intelligence, just as the M142 High Mobility Artillery Systems, HIMARS, have been. Russian military analysts were now going through five stages of grief, Zhivov said. That's all. Thank you for watching.